Welcome to a new episode of Chips and Tricks. I'm sure you're familiar with this problem. The milling cutter breaks during machining for no apparent reason. Today I will explain what could cause this and how you can ensure that your milling cutters remain whole in the future. Milling produces various forces that act on the tool and lead to tool breakage. Two forces in particular play a role here. So let's take a closer look. The radial displacement forces and the axial tensile force. During milling we have a rotating tool and a lateral cutting movement. This results in radial displacement. To sum it up, the tool is pushed away from the side of the material. This is the most obvious when the milling cutter starts to cut. Radial displacement occurs as soon as the milling cutter touches the workpiece and pushes it to the side. Lateral displacement occurs until the cutter leaves the workpiece again. Then you can watch the tool return to its original position. But don't worry, this little quirk is not a mistake. The faster we move, the greater the radial displacement forces. The workpiece material also plays a decisive role. The more solid it is, the greater the load. The radial displacement becomes critical in the combination with a second force, the axial tensile force. This is generated primarily as a result of the spiral angle during milling. A quick spiral angle can be beneficial, it ensures a soft cut. However, the greater the spiral angle, the greater the axial tensile force. The rotation of the tool in conjunction with the cutting force pulls the tool out of the tool holder. Now you know about the radial displacement forces and the axial tensile force. But what do these two forces have to do with tool breakage? If these forces are too high, the tool will be overloaded and the milling cutter will break. As you might realize, it is not possible to stop these forces from arising. On the contrary, although the forces could be reduced through slower milling, this would be uneconomical. After all, time is money. We all know that. The solution is to clamp correctly. You can prevent tool breakage by securely clamping the tool. For example, with a welding holder or a pin lock in the power chuck. A high clamping force and concentricity are decisive here. You should also clamp the milling cutter as short as possible so that it cannot bend. And you also need to check the tensioning screw regularly for wear. The same applies to the concentricity of the milling tool after clamping. However, the workpiece must be securely clamped too. Otherwise, there is a risk that the workpiece will be pulled up by the tensile force. Make sure that the tool piece is clamped as rigidly as possible, but is not deformed in the process. If you do not have the option of a really stable clamp, I recommend that you guide the tool path and feed direction to the most stable position on the clamping device. So let's sum it all up. Unfortunately, we cannot simply switch off or reduce either the radial displacement forces or the axial tensile force, as we also want to move fast. However, by securely clamping the tool and workpiece, we can counteract this a fair bit and prevent the milling cutter from breaking. So the chip tip of the day is clamp your workpiece and tool securely.